Shalom Havarim, James Trim here. Uh, t today I want to talk to you about the uh, ancient Jewish sect of Jewish believers in Yeshua as the Messiah known as the Ebionites and what their origin was and how they differ from the Nazarenes. Uh, the subject came up because someone in the comments uh, made mention of the Ebionites and that their opinion was that the Ebionites were the original uh, followers of Yeshua as the Messiah. So I hope to uh, uh, make the case here. Not only, of course, we've made the case repeatedly uh, on this channel. It is the theme of the channel, really, that the Nazarenes were the original Jewish followers of Yeshua as the Messiah, but that the Ebionites were not Nazarenes, that they split off from the Nazarenes and they had unique and different and frankly uh, apostate ideas from the Nazarenes. Uh, before, before we get going, I need to ask everybody to please consider donating to support these videos, this channel, and this work in general. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on the donate link in the video description or sending donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org. Uh, we really do need you to chip in and help. Uh, we have not gotten a donation in in the entire so far in the month of July uh, at the making of this video. So we have not not gotten a donation in since June 30th and uh, and that was a, a modest donation in itself. So please consider donating. We need your help and um, also, I want to ask you to please like these videos and uh, sub uh, subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so that uh, you'll get notifications when new videos come out. Let us know what you think of these videos in the comments and participate in the discussions in the comments. I do read those comments. Uh, sometimes I reply to those comments and sometimes they spawn new videos to address uh, questions and comments and issues that arise like this video today. All those things are things that uh, the YouTube algorithm looks at and um, to decide which videos to recommend to new uh, viewers and we want to get recommended to new viewers. So uh, please do all those things. And also uh, this video, like many of our videos, has a set of PDF handouts where you can follow along and that uh, have some of the quotations that we might have from extra biblical sources. And um, you can access that uh, PDF handouts, uh, set of PDF handouts by clicking on the handouts link in the video description as well. All right, let's get going here. Uh, our topic is the Nazarenes and the Ebionites and the first uh, page of our handout is, says Nazarenes were not Ebionites. In uh, restoring the ancient sect of Nazarene Judaism, it is important, which is our goal here, by the way, on this channel. Um, it is frankly my life's work. It is important to distinguish the ancient Nazarenes from another ancient sect of Jewish believers in Yeshua as the Messiah known as Ebionites or Evianim. Uh, the fourth century church father Epiphanius was the first church father, I use that term in quotes, was the first church father to list the Nazarenes as heretics. Uh, Epiphanius also distinguishes the Nazarenes from the Ebionites. Um, he gives his description of the Nazarenes in chapter 29 of his book, Panarion, but he gives his description of the Ebionites separately as chapter 30 of Panarion. By the way, uh, an interesting fact about Epiphanius, uh, the fourth century so-called church father, is that Epiphanius was racially Jewish, but he was uh, neither a Nazarene nor an Ebionite. He was uh, a, a, a Christian, and he, he knew the difference uh, between uh, being a Christian, a Nazarene, and an Ebionite. Okay. 
The next page of our handouts is titled Ray Pritz on Nazarenes and Ebionites. And uh, this is a reference to an excellent book, by the way. Uh, now, I like to um, I like to depend on on what we call primary sources. This is something I learned from my father growing up. Um, my father hammered in me uh, uh, primary sources. Study the primary sources. Don't believe or don't buy into what somebody writes, you know, with secondary information. And I inherited a number of books from my father's library um, that uh, uh I didn't end up with all the books from my father's library, but I, and, and some of them were so old and falling apart that I no longer have them. But uh, some of the uh, books I did inherit, for example, was the Journal of Christopher Columbus uh, in an English translation. My dad was like, don't believe what somebody tells you Christopher Columbus thought, believed, or said, or whatever. Here is what he said, you know. Uh, also, the writings of Albert Einstein, uh, you know, he told me, don't uh, don't read what somebody says about Einstein, read Einstein, um, etc. So I have a number of those kinds of, uh, of books. And of course, the great writers, Plato, Aristotle, etc. Uh, in my library that that I got from my father. I digress. So let me get back to. So while I may uh, believe that this book by Ray Pritz is great, and it is, um, it's it is filled with primary sources. Ray Pritz himself is a secondary source, but he is heavily dependent and documents what he says with primary sources. And this is really the definitive academic work on the Nazarenes. I take issue with the fact that the title of the book is Nazarene Jewish Christianity, and at, in the book at times it refers to Nazarenes and Ebionites as Christians. And this is something that academics do that is dead wrong and internally inconsistent because if you study the first, the uh, primary sources in the book, uh, it's clear that, for example, Epiphanius says that the Nazarenes did not call themselves Christians. They didn't identify as Christians. But not only that, it's also clear that Christians like uh, 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 did not consider themselves consider Nazarenes Christians. Epiphanius, for example, says that they are quote complete Jews, uh, not uh, not Christians at all in his estimation. So if ancient Christians didn't consider them Nazarenes Christians, and the Nazarenes didn't consider the Nazarenes Christians, why in the world do modern academics insist on classing them as Christians? It makes no sense. It's academically flawed. But um, uh, we simply have to realize that they do. So while the book is titled Nazarene Jewish Christianity, it's really about Nazarene Judaism. Okay. Um, so in his book, Ray Pritz writes, quote, Nazarenes were not mentioned by earlier church fathers, not because they did not exist, but rather because they were still generally considered to be acceptably orthodox. The history of the Nazarene sect must be clearly distinguished from that of the Ebionites. So Ray Pritz on page 82 of his uh, book, which is really the academic standard on the issue, I would say, it's a really great book. Um, and I'm, I'm not getting any kind of uh, advertising funding for this book, but it's a great book. Um, Ray Pritz, on page 82 of his book, makes the point that there was a sharp distinction between Nazarenes and Ebionites. Um, we see evidence of this in the writings of the earlier church father, Justin Martyr, in his book, Dialogue with Trifo the Jew. Uh, he speaks of two different types of Jewish believers in Yeshua as the Messiah, but he never names the two sects. He says, or Pritz writes actually about, uh, about this, on page 27 of his, this book, Nazarene Jewish Christianity, the same book that I showed you, he says, suffice it to say at this point that Justin, around the beginning of the second half of the second century, recognizes two kinds of Christians of the Jewish race 
whom he differentiates on Christological grounds. I can't say strongly enough, the word Christians doesn't really belong there, but so be it. Uh, the academics use it. One group whom Justin condemns holds doctrines which line up well with what is known to us of Ebionite teaching. The other group differs from Justin's orthodoxy only in its continued adherence to Mosaic law. Again, page 27 of Ray Pritt's book. In fact, Justin says of this second group, quoting now from Justin Martyr, Dialogue with Trifo the Jew, I hold that we ought to join ourselves to such and associate with them in all things as kinsmen and brethren. So Justin Martyr, a Christian, uh, had absolutely no problems with maintaining fellowship with the Nazarene Jews. Uh, he considered them, uh, um, uh, yeah, he, he realized that they were you know, still observing the, the Torah and he didn't uh, believe in doing that, but um, uh, he uh, had no problem with fellowship with them and maintaining contact with them and, and so on. Uh, he obviously did not hold that view of the Ebionites. The confusion seems to have begun with origin. Uh, as Pritz writes in his book, page 28, how did this confusion come about? Talking about the confusion between Nazarenes and Ebionites. Um, Justin knew of two kinds of Jewish Christians, but gives them no name in his extant works. Irenaeus wrote about Ebionites, but knew of no distinctions. Christological or otherwise within Ebionism itself. The same could be said of Tertullian and Hippolytus. When we come to origin, however, and return to the East, we again find two classes of Jewish Christians, which he calls Ebionites. From this point on, the name Ebionite becomes a catch-all for law-keeping Christians of Jewish background. Eusebius, in his turn, cannot avoid seeing in his sources, if not from hearsay, two distinguishable Jewish Christian groups, but he does not succeed very well in discerning the beliefs which separate them. For him, there is one name, Ebionite. So this is where the, the confusion began to arise. Our next uh, page is titled Nazarenes versus Ebionites. And now we're going to get into the primary sources. So until Epiphanius, the church fathers didn't mention Nazarenes by name, not because they didn't exist, but because they were generally not listed as heretical and were often confused with the Ebionites. So they were Jews, they weren't Christians, but uh, they didn't really disagree with the Christians on major issues except Torah observance. They, they were absolutely still uh, 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 Torah observant, didn't believe that the Torah had been abolished. However, a comparison of the characteristics of the Nazarenes and the Ebionites from ancient sources, sources will demonstrate that they were clearly not the same group. For example, Jerome, in writing to Augustine in his letter 75, he he writes about the Nazarenes saying, and this is in your handouts, and what I've done in the handouts, if you don't get the, didn't get the PDF, you really should, because in the PDF, I've got these laid out in chart form, opposing next to each other, uh, primary sources on each. So, uh, Jerome, in writing to Augustine, letter 75, he says about the Nazarenes, the adherents to this sect are known commonly as Nazarenes. They believe in Christ, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, and they say that he who suffered under Pontius Pilate and rose again is the same as the one in whom we believe. Um, so uh, uh, this is actually a summary of the uh, uh, so-called Apostles' Creed and demonstrates to us the very strong likelihood 
that what the document known as the Apostles' Creed, in its original form at least, was a Nazarene document. So the heading, for, by the way, for this comparison, this initial uh, first comparison here is what they believed about Yeshua. So Epiphanius in his Panarion 29 writes about the Nazarenes, for they acknowledge both the resurrection of the dead and the divine creation of all things and declare that God is one and that his son is Yeshua the Messiah. Okay, uh, so they, uh, um, uh, they believe in Yeshua as the Son and in God as a, as a oneness. Okay, um, the Ebionites, however, believe differently. Irenaeus, in his Against Heresies, writes, Those who are called Ebionites agree that the world was made by God, but their opinions with respect to the Lord are, uh, speaking of Yeshua as a human prophet, were similar to those of Serenthius and Carpratius. In other words, they didn't, they rejected the deity of the Messiah. And Hippolytus, in his book Against All Heresies, writes about the Ebionites. The Ebionites, however, acknowledge that the world was made by him who is in reality God, but they pro propound legends concerning the Christ similarly with Serenthus and Caprites. They live comfortably, conformably to the customs of the Jews, alleging that they are justified according to the law and saying that Jesus was justified by fulfilling the law. And therefore it was, according to the Ebionites, that the Savior was named the Christ of God in Jesus, since not one of the rest of mankind had observed completely the law. For if even any other had fulfilled the commandments contained in the law, he would have been that Christ. And the Ebionites allege that they themselves also, when in like manner they fulfill the law, are able to become Christ's. For they assert that the Lord himself was a man in a like sense with all the rest of the human family. Okay, so here we can see that the Nazarenes believed in the deity of Messiah and the Ebionites did not. Okay, our next page titled On the Virgin Birth. And again, quoting the same letter 75 of Jerome to Augustine, Jerome writes about the Nazarenes saying, the adherents to this sect are known commonly as Nazarenes. They believe in Christ, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary. And they say that he has suffered under Pontius Pilate, rose again in the same, is the same as the one in whom we believe. So they believed in the Virgin birth. However, Irenaeus writes about the Ebionites uh, in his Against Heresies 321. God then has made man, and the Lord did himself save us, giving us the token of the virgin. But not as some allege among those who presuming um, uh, to expound the scriptures thus, Behold, a young woman shall conceive and bring forth a son, as Theodosian and if, uh, Ephesian and he, uh, has interpreted, and Aquila of Pontus, both Jewish proselytes. The Ebionites, following these, assert that he was begotten by Joseph, thus destroying as far as in them lies such a marvelous dispensation of God and setting aside the testimony of the prophets which proceeded from God. So here he's telling us that the Ebionites believed that Yeshua was the son of Joseph uh, and that he was not the product of a virgin birth. In Eusebius writes in his Ecclesiastical History 327, the evil demon, however, being unable to tear certain others from their allegiance to the Christ of God, yet found them susceptible in a different direction, and so brought them over to his own purposes. The ancients quite properly called these men Ebionites, because they, felt they held poor and mean opinions concerning Christ. For they considered him a plain and common man, 
who was justified only because of, of superior virtue and who was the fruit of the intercourse of a man with Mary. And in Ecclesiastical History 6-7, he writes, But the heresy of the Ebionites, as it is called, asserts that Christ was the son of Joseph and Mary, concerning him a, considering him a mere man. So, the Nazarenes, according to primary sources, believed in the virgin birth. But the Ebionites, by contrast, according to primary sources, rejected the virgin birth. Our next handout tells us what they each believed about Paul. So uh, um, the, the first column we have is uh, uh, the Nazarene commentary on Isaiah chapter 8, verses 23 through 9, 3, or Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 4 in Christian editions. This is actually as quoted by Jerome in his commentary on uh, Isaiah. Um, but he's telling us that he's quoting a, a Nazarene commentary on Isaiah. The proclaiming was multiplied through the good news of the emissary Paul, who was least of all emissaries. So they believed that uh, part of this prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 4, uh, in Christian versions at least, chapter 8, verses 23 through chapter 9, verse 3 in Jewish editions, um, was actually a prophecy about Paul. Okay? So they not only believed in Paul, they believed Paul was fulfilling uh, and spoken of in prophecy in the Tanakh. The Ebionites, however, held a different view. According to uh, against uh, Irenaeus in his Against Heresies, he writes, but the Ebionites repudiate the Apostle Paul. And Epiphanius in his Panarion, chapter 30, verses 16 through 19, or, or section 16 through 19, they declare that he was a Greek. He went up to Jerusalem, they say, and when he had spent some time there, he was seized with a passion to marry the daughter of the priest. For this reason, he became a proselyte through the Sadducee movement, hence his working with the temple police and was circumcised. Uh, then, when he failed to get the girl, he flew into a rage and wrote against circumcision and against the Sabbath and the law. So, uh, here we see clearly that the Ebionites rejected Paul, whereas the Nazarenes not only accepted Paul, but saw Paul as, the, as being prophesied of in a positive manner by Isaiah. Uh, let's see, our next uh, topic is on the scriptures, what they each believed on the scriptures. So Epiphanius in Panarion 29 writes about the Nazarenes, but these sectarians did not call themselves Christians but Nazarenes. However, they are simply complete Jews. They use not only the New Testament but the Old Testament as well as the Jews do. Okay, so Epiphanius here is telling us that the ancient Nazarenes used the books he knew as the Old and New Testament, both. Um, so uh, Epiphanius in Panarion 29 is looking for anything to criticize from a Christian perspective, the Nazarenes as apostates. But uh, so if they had uh, a, a different set of scriptures or they rejected most of the New Testament or uh, didn't accept the books he knew of as the New Testament, he would have capitalized on that. Instead, he admits that they use both, and in fact, he's critical of the fact that they use the Old Testament, um, which is uh, quite interesting and telling about early Christianity. However, this is uh, completely different in the uh, for the Ebionites. Irenaeus writes about the Ebionites in his book Against Heresies, but the Ebionites use only Matthew. So their only New Testament was the book of Matthew. And Eusebius in Ecclesiastical History writes, they use only the so-called gospel according to the Hebrews and made small account of the rest. Now, if you go back and watch the video we did on the gospel according to the Hebrews, you'll find out that the 
our book of Matthew is actually an abridgment of the gospel according to the Hebrews. So the uh, church fathers often refer to these somewhat interchangeably. And um, uh, that's certainly the case when we're talking about the book of Matthew as used by the Ebionites. Um, and we'll get to their book of Matthew. In fact, that's our next heading. But the point is that he's really saying the same thing here. They used only the gospel according to the Hebrews, which was actually a version of our book of Matthew. And um, uh, they didn't use any of the other books of the New Testament. Uh, they didn't use Mark, Luke, Acts, uh, the, uh, uh, any of the other books. Okay, uh, the next comparison is titled The Book of Matthew. And uh, writing about the Nazarenes, Epiphanius says, they, uh, the Nazarenes, have the gospel according to the Matthew quite complete in Hebrew, for this gospel is certainly still preserved among them as it was first written in Hebrew letters. He says that in Benarion 29, uh, chapter 29, uh, um, or book 29, chapter 9, section 4. Epiphanius writes uh, uh, also in chapter 30 of Benarion, or book 30 of Benarion, uh, chapter 13, section 2, about the Ebionites, he says, in the gospel that is in general use among them, which is called according to Matthew, which, however, is not wholly complete, but falsified and mutilated. So Epiphanius tells us that the Nazarenes and Ebionites, they both use this gospel of Matthew, which was um, uh, actually a larger version of our gospel. It was actually the gospel according to the Hebrews, which was a larger uh, of which our Gospel of Matthew was an abridgment. But the Ebionite version, it says, while the Nazarene version was quite complete as it was first written, the Ebionite version was whole, uh, not wholly complete, but falsified and mutilated. So here's a, another distinction between Nazarenes and Ebionites. And in our uh, uh, video that we did on the gospel according to the Hebrews, we in fact um, uh, made the case and covered the fact that the Nazarenes and Ebionites used different versions of the gospel according to the Hebrews with the, um, uh, with the Nazarene version being quite complete and with the Ebionite version being not wholly complete but falsified and mutilated. Our next handout is titled Sacrifices and Doctrinal Vegetarianism. Uh, Epiphanius writes in Panarion chapter 30, um, or book 30, chapter 16, sections four through five. He writes, in the gospel that is in general use among them, the gospel that is in general use among them reports, I am come to do away with the sacrifices. If you cease not from sacrificing, the wrath of God will not cease from you. Now, Epiphanius is quoting this from the Ebionite version of uh, the Gospel according to the Hebrews or their version of Matthew. <clears throat> Bart Ehrman, now I don't always like everything that he writes as an academic. I don't, he's a skeptic. I don't like a lot of things that he writes, frankly, but uh, he's uh, uh, in in his book, Lost Christianities, in writing about the Ebionites, he says, the anti-sacrificial views of the Ebionites also come through in some of the other fragments which Epiphanius wrote from the Ebion and I put in brackets, from the Ebionite version of the Gospel according to the Hebrews. In one of them, the disciples ask Jesus where he wants to eat the Passover lamb, uh, uh, where he wants to eat the Passover lamb with them, uh, cross-referencing uh, Mark 14, 12. And he replies, I have no desire to eat the flesh of this Passover lamb with you. And in another place he says, I have come to abolish the sacrifices. If you do not cease from sacrificing, the wrath of God will not cease from weighing upon you. Um, where there is no sacrifice, there is no meat. 
in the Gospel of the Ebionites description of John the Baptist. In this Gospel, the diet of John the Baptist was said to have consisted not of locusts, which would be meat, and wild honey, cross-referencing Mark 1.6, but of pancakes and wild honey. Okay, so uh, he puts that together uh, really well. And uh, this is from Lost Christianities by Bart Ehrman, uh, pages 102 through 103. I could have put the same material for you together from the primary sources, but he's depending on primary sources here. Uh, and so uh, uh, even though it's a secondary source, I have no problem citing it. Um, and you can go further behind it to look up the, the primary sources that he's referencing. However, there's nothing that we know about Nazarenes that would indicate that they opposed the sacrifices. In fact, Paul, who is described in Acts 24, verses 5 and 14, as a ringleader of the Nazarenes, performed animal sacrifices in the temple in Acts chapter 21, verses 17 through 26, and chapter 24, verses 17 through 18. Moreover, in the Nazarene version of the Gospel according to the Hebrews, uh, the original unabridged version of Matthew, which was not falsified and mutilated, but was whole and complete as it was first written, Yochanan ate locusts and Yeshua ate the Passover lamb with his Talmudim. Uh, those Ebionite uh, citations were the, were the falsified and mutilated version as it differed from the Nazarene version. So uh, the uh, Ebionites were opposed to the sacrifices and doctrinal vegetarians, and the Nazarenes were not opposed to the sacrifices and were not doctrinal vegetarians. All right, so let's talk, fine. our last, uh, our next handout here, our last page is titled, Origin of the Ebionites. Where did they come from? And Epiphanius writes in Panarion chapter 30, uh, uh, book 30 actually, chapter 1, section 1. Next comes Ebion, the founder of the Ebionites. He held doctrines like those of the Nazarenes, being from their sect, although what he taught and proclaimed differed from what they did. And in, uh, uh, again, in Panarion, Book 30, Chapter 2, uh, Section 7, he writes, Their sect began after the capture of Jerusalem. For when all those who believed in Messiah settled at that time, for the most part in Perea, in the land called Pella, they provided an opportunity for Ebion. They, the Nazarenes and Ebionites, do in fact differ from each other, which is the point of this video. So the Nazarenes were the original Jewish followers of Yeshua as the Messiah. Though there was uh, some confusion uh, between Nazarenes and Ebionites, anciently and in modern time by some modern scholars, they were not the same group. Epiphanius states clearly that they differ from one another. Uh, he, uh, 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 if we simply look at the primary sources, we can see that they differed on the deity of Messiah. They differed on their beliefs on the virgin birth. They differed on their beliefs about, uh, the, about Paul. The uh, Nazarenes used the entirety of what we would call the New, what is in is called what Christians call the New Testament, but we we would we call in Nazarene Judaism the Kitavim Nitzarim, the writings of the Nazarenes. Uh, but the Ebionites they didn't they used only the a, a mutilated and falsified version, a unique version of the Book of Matthew. And uh, uh, the uh, Ebionites were doctrinal vegetarians and opposed to the sacrifices, while the Nazarenes were not. They were two different groups. Uh, that's made apparent by the fact that Epiphanius, in his book Panarion, 
uh, addresses them separately as from his per perspective two different heresies um, uh, but uh, uh, they were clearly two different groups and he specifies in Panarion 30 that uh, they, the Nazarenes and Ebionites, do in fact differ from each other. They also had different versions of the book of Matthew or the full, the gospel according to the Hebrews, of which our book of Matthew or the Christian modern book of Matthew is a um, abridgment. So Nazarenes were, Ebionites were not Nazarenes. They weren't the original followers of Yeshua as the Messiah. And they separated from or split off as a heresy from the original Jewish followers of Yeshua uh, uh, after 70 AD in Pella uh, when uh, they began teaching uh, some, uh, some false doctrines. Okay, so as we worked for the restoration of the ancient sect of Nazarene Judaism, it is very important not to confuse the Nazar ancient Nazarenes with the ancient Ebionites. And yes, there are modern people who identify as Ebionites. Um, and uh, um, some of them are convinced that the Ebionites were the original Jewish followers of Yeshua. This occurs for a number of reasons, either because they haven't done the research and don't uh, aren't clear on the fact that Nazarenes and Ebionites were two different groups, uh, uh, or because they are unaware of the uh, actual origin of the Ebionites as a split off away from the original Jewish followers of Yeshua as the Messiah. Oftentimes they come with some preconceived beliefs uh, some preconceived uh, doctrines. They don't believe in the deity of Messiah. They don't believe in the virgin birth. Uh, they don't believe in, or they maybe they're doctrinal vegetarians, or they reject Paul, or all of these beliefs. And since the Ebionites held those beliefs, uh, they identify with the Ebionites, and then regardless of what the primary sources tell us of the history of the situation, want to try and force the Ebionites into the position of being the original Jewish followers of Yeshua, when historically they simply were not. So this channel and my life's work is about restoring the ancient sect of Nazarene Judaism and not the Ebionites. And it's very important for us to realize in this process uh, that the Ebionites were not Nazarenes, they weren't the original Jewish followers of Yeshua, and that their doctrines were uh, an apostasy away from the Nazarenes and away from the original Jewish followers of Yeshua. So we are not Ebionites, we are Nazarenes. All right, uh, before I close, I just need to ask everybody to please consider donating to this work. Uh, you are the ones that make these videos possible. And you can do that by clicking on the donate link in the video description. Uh, so far, we haven't gotten a single donation this month. So we, uh, we definitely need your help. So you can click on the donations link and uh, uh, or you can send donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org. Also, like this video, uh, subscribe to this video. It's absolutely free to subscribe. And then click on that uh, little bell, ring the bell, so you'll get notifications when new videos come out. Let us know what you think in the video descriptions. We'd love to hear your feedback. We respond to your feedback. This video itself is a response uh, to your feedback. All these things are things that YouTube video looks at to decide which videos to recommend to new viewers. Also, share these videos on social media with your friends on uh, um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, in relevant Facebook groups, in email to your friends, etc. Until next time, everybody. Sean. Sure.